Well, let's get more on this now and talk to Phyllis Benish. She's a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies and joins us live from Washington, D.C. Phyllis, some very strong words there from U.S. President Barack Obama saying uh, he very much supports Israel's right to defend itself. But what more are we learning uh, about the U.S. position on the crisis? Well, I think that there's a certain consistency in the U.S. position. We're not only hearing from President Obama and members of Congress. In fact, today, uh, the Senate voted 100 to 0 on a very powerful rhetorical resolution saying we stand with Israel, Israel has the right to defend itself without a word about the deaths of Palestinian children, not a word of even urging calmly, cautiously their great ally uh, to, to pull back just a little bit. Uh, nothing like that. It was an absolute endorsement of everything Israel is doing and more significantly perhaps at the request of the Obama administration uh, the Senate Appropriations Committee has just voted to support a, an additional $351 million, another third of a trillion dollars, uh, sorry, third of a billion dollars to add to the $3.1 billion that the U.S. is already providing to the Israeli military this year uh, to give it additional military support. So the, re the support is not only rhetorical, it's also in direct military assistance. Now, I think that it is true, what we're hearing from some commentators, that in the administration in particular, there is a recognition that this escalation uh, by Israel, particularly the escalation involving ground troops and the escalating airstrikes that have accompanied the ground troops, because even though the ground forces themselves are so far moving only near the edges of the Gaza Strip, they're not yet moving wholesale into the center of the Strip, into the most populated areas, their entry, beginning last night, has been accompanied by a vast escalation in the airstrikes, so that we're seeing another hospital that was, okay. that was hit, an additional four children that were killed, etc. Um, but is there a disconnect, though, Phyllis, between what the administration says in public and what they're pushing for behind the scenes? I mean, yes, they support Israel, but is Obama privately yeah. worried uh, about where this Israeli operation is going, as you seem to be suggesting? I think he's probably privately worried. I don't think that he is even privately pushing the Israelis to curtail their massive human rights violations, not least because he's very worried about the role that Israel may play in scuttling a potential deal with Iran. We should not forget that tomorrow uh, is the deadline for the, the initial six-month interim agreement with, between the U.S. and its allies and Iran. Uh, there is the possibility, of course, that those talks can be extended, but it's going to be a very dicey proposition. And I think that the president is very concerned politically that if he puts any additional pressure on Israel regarding the Palestinians, Israel may respond by some kind of public mobilization against an agreement with Iran, which would turn the pro-Israel forces, particularly in the Congress, against a very important uh, uh, foreign policy initiative that the president would like to see go forward that being the possibility of a real resolution with Iran. Okay. So there are many things at work here. Let me ask a final question, Phyllis. I mean, President Obama uh, and his Secretary of State, John Kerry, have both worked uh, tirelessly to try and reinvigorate the peace process, but that's come to nothing so far. When this crisis is over, where does this leave U.S. policy in the Middle East? It's a shambles. The reason that the U.S. round of talks, this recent round of talks, failed was because they did not Re reinvigorate, as you said, they, they repeated the exact same failed policies that we've seen for the last 23 years. Those policies hadn't worked for 23 years. There was no reason to think that the same policy was going to work in the 24th year. And to no one's surprise, it didn't work. It's only going to work if they completely revamp their policies to move towards a policy that supports international law, human rights, and equality for all, both Palestinians and Israelis, rather than a policy that's grounded in maintaining Israeli domination at this period. Phyllis Bennett, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you. Well, Israel is in